before we go any further, my name is Bob Costas, and, and I thought that was necessary so that you wouldn't think you'd accidentally stumbled upon Nightline, what with that opening footage, which came from WrestleMania 5. And finally, this man, Bobby the Brain Heenan, known as the Brain by his many admirers, called the Weasel by his few detractors. But nonetheless, Bobby the Brain Heenan finally achieved his first championship as manager of ravishing Rick Rude. But as we could see by that footage, it was a disputed championship brain because apparently you were doing something out of the ordinary with the Ultimate Warrior. Well, what happened, Mr. Costas, is that the Ultimate Warrior insulted me right before this happened. So I just took matters into my own hands. There's not a baseball player who doesn't load a baseball. There's not a football player who doesn't hold. There's not a hockey player who doesn't give a cheap shot. There's not a boxer that doesn't stick you in the eye with the thumb. There's not a basketball player that doesn't hit you with the elbows. I just did what I had to do. You know, it's interesting you would mention all those other sports because once your fame was confined to wrestling, you were known as the smartest man in wrestling. But now I see that no less an expert than John Madden has dubbed you the smartest man in all of sports. You can say that again if you like. The smartest man in all of sports. That has a nice ring to it, don't it? Yes, I was selected to the All Madden team as general manager, coach, GM, everything. And yet, through the years, you'd sort of been the Gene Mock of the wrestling world, a man recognized as a genius and yet always denied a championship until Ravishing Rick Rude took the Intercontinental belt. Well, maybe Gene Mock would like to compare himself to me. I don't like to compare myself to an old man out of work. But... Uh... I didn't have any champions until I had, uh, ra until I have Ravishing Rick Rude right now, and uh, yes, it's quite a feather in my cap. Now, explain this to me. Rick Rude is the intercontinental champion, as opposed to the world champion, who is Hulk Hogan. Now, intercontinental would seem to me to encompass all seven continents, so wouldn't that be the world champion? Well, there's other places Hogan can defend the title. <clears throat> On the movie set, hangs around a lot of diners, a lot of places that makes him popular with the humanoids out there. I'm talking about the people that wear a brown sock and a white sock and got a pair at home just like them. Those are the kind of people he appeals to. What is the, the profile of the average wrestling fan? <clears throat> well, the average wrestling fan, in my estimation, you're the guest. I could be the host. <laughs> could very well be. Uh, my estimation, the average wrestling fan is a person that watches wrestling on TV. Then they go and buy a ticket. They sit down. They bring their children. If they're humanoid fans, they buy Hulk Hogan t-shirts and all his memorabilia, and they chant derogatory things towards me. If they're my fans, they sit there properly attired and keep their mouth shut. What is it between you and Hogan? Hogan has something I want. It's the World Wrestling Federation Championship. How do you plan to get it? Well, I've got a lot of plans. I've got Andre the Giant. I've got Ravishing Rick Rude. I have my Brain Busters, King Haku. I have my Brooklyn Brawl. I have a lot of different avenues I'm going to go down. It's just a matter of time. It's an incredible stable, isn't it? No. A stable is a place where you fly, find fly-infested horses. I have a family. These members are my family. Do, do you all live in the same house? No, we don't live in the same house. We all live in separate places. That, so in what sense is it a family? Are, are you... Well, it's a family-orientated group. We all consider ourselves as one. We just don't think of ourselves as a stable. Uh, obviously, I... I chose a, a crass word to describe an enterprise such as yours. Well, that can happen. There, there, have been, there have been some controversies, though. The Red Rooster fired you. Well, he heard word that I was going to dump him. And he just beat me to the punch, you might say. So I took a guy with limited ability, limited talent, limited intelligence, and I made him a star. Always the mark of a great coach or manager. I would say that. And that's where you heard it. And uh, he turned on me. And then, and then you wind up in the ring with him. Now think about that. This would be as if Tom Landry suddenly donned a helmet. As if Tommy Lasorda suddenly took to the mound and pitched. As if Pat Riley put on the shorts again and played guard for the Lakers. You, as the manager, put on the trunks and went into the ring to defend your manhood. I am still an active wrestler. Of course, I don't care to participate and get into the ring. I don't like somebody big and twice the size of me, with their sweaty hands picking me up in the air and throwing me around. I'd rather beat them mentally. That's where I get my kicks. Well, that's one of the ways I'm going to What about this deal with Hercules Hernandez? Now, I thought it was, frankly, in my role as an observer and a journalist, I thought it was despicable 
when you tried to sell Hercules Hernandez to the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, to sell another man into slavery? Thank you. Uh, when Steinbrenner makes the trade or sells somebody, does he confer with the man? No, he's gone. He's on that bus out of town. What I did is I, I took Hercules as far as I could take this poor guy. I did as much for him as I could possibly do. He didn't have it up here to be a member of the family. DiBiase needed somebody to be a slave. He says, hey, you got this big dummy. Here's some cash, a good amount of cash. I said, I'll take it. I had Hercules a nice little position in life set up. He could have been out back on a chain out in the yard. He could have done a lot of nice things. But then he turned on me. It wasn't like I just cast him aside without giving him another job. He had a position in life. As the smartest man in sports, as a manager extraordinaire, what advice would you give me about managing my own career? <laughs> you may be a little too far gone. But like your show. See, I have my own talk show. Called, okay. I'm the star of it. It's called Bobby Heenan. Starring Bobby Heenan. The Bobby Heenan Oh, so this show. isn't the one you do with Gorilla Monsoon. Who? I thought he was your partner. No, he's my co-host. But your show is called Bob Costas Later. It's just later. No, it's later with Bob Costas. Doesn't matter. It's still later. Yeah. Later is something you tell an ugly girl on a date. Later. <laughs> what you should do is call it the Bob Costas Show. Then people would recognize you on the street. People know who you are. Good advice. Not bad advice. I'm not even going to charge you for it. The Bob Costa Show continues in a minute. We done? No. More on Later with Bob Costa, right after this. Back with the man John Madden dubbed the smartest man in all of sports. There's no disputing he's the smartest man in wrestling. Bobby the Brain Heenan, co-host along with Gorilla Monsoon of primetime wrestling. And, and very often, as is the case with most good journalists, you have to get out of the studio and go on location, such as the show you did on a yacht. That was my own yacht. I had him out there for the weekend. <clears throat> Made a spectacle, of, a spectacle of himself. Had to ask him to leave. Monsoon did. Yes. Had some lovely ladies there, had champagne, went out for a little afternoon yachting. Caused trouble once again. What about the time when you had to go to Tucson? Kind of an old west setting. Oh, yes. <clears throat> that was horrible. Went out there to film primetime, some episodes of primetime. They got me movie director there. Uh, I knew. I wanted to do some <clears throat> movie work just to see what it was like. Hooked me up to a chain hoist, pulled me out backwards through some doors, knocked me through a window, shoved me off a roof. Yeah, that was a, I had a great time in Tucson. What, what about the, uh, the episode with the Rosati sisters? Oh, the Rosati sisters. They, they were lovely women. You know them? No, no, I, only through television. And you should have a Richter scale if you ever meet them. <laughs> they're, they're, only, they're only girls you can take out to eat for pizza and you don't have to cut it. They're that way. Rosati. You know what Rosati means in Italian? Lard. Well, Big did, girls. Didn't you refer to them uh, quite gently as warthogs? Sweat hogs. Oh, sweat hogs. Yeah. Was something I didn't close get to that, that far to see if there were warts on them. Well, well, how, how, is it, how is it that you happen to hook up with them? Is it a I blind know, date situation? They, just kept, they show up on prime time, unannounced, uninvited. They gave him a banana squirt gun to squirt me with. They make fun of me. They, these three stand there and make fun of me. They look like three wrecking balls out of work, and they make fun of me. So, so they're Monsoon's girlfriends. They may be Monsoon's missus. I, as far as I know, who knows? Now, what, what is the deal now? with the Macho Man, once managed by the lovely Miss Elizabeth, now in her place, since she became disillusioned with the breakup of the Mega Powers and, and the battle between Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man, she's out of the picture, and in comes this imposter, the sensational Sherry. She's not an imposter. She's a very, very beautiful woman. But there'll woman. never be another Miss Elizabeth. Good. I mean, she's attractive in her own gaudy kind of way. I mean, if you like discount dresses and cheap cologne, she's great. And she appeals to a certain amount of people out there. She's an uh, attractive lady in her own way. But Sherry, she's that little, she's that centerfold, you know what I mean, without the staples. I mean, she's there. You can look at that thing all day long with Sherry. She's something. Nice makeup. She dresses well. She's going to add class to the Macho Man. She's going to take him back up there. What person in all of the World Wrestling Federation do you admire most outside of yourself? Uh, Ravishing Rick Rude. He accomplished something for me. You know, Ravishing Rick Rude shares a certain personality trait with you, and that is conceit. Here is a man who takes narcissism to new heights or lows, depending on your point of view. I keep the word simple. You know, these people are up pretty late at night here now. You, know, you might be find a couple of them under the sheets there. They don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> keep it pretty simple. Yes, Rick Rude is very <laughs> conceited. So am I. But, you know, I can afford to be. I manage a champion. He's a champion. 
Why not? There isn't a guy at home that doesn't put his tie in the morning, comb his hair, and think he looks great when he leaves the house. The pock marks over his face, ties a clip on tie, couldn't get a haircut in Japan. That's the kind of a guy that looks in the mirror. But that's life, pal. <laughs> you don't have a footrest here or anything? <laughs> Bobby the Brain Heenan checking out the decor. I noticed uh, they repulled the furniture from the Port Authority lobby. <laughs> Lovely, don't you think? Yeah, it's 1936. You just come on a program like this, a network television program, and insult the host. A man who's been solicitous and kind to you. Well, I just speak the truth. A lot of people don't like that. I can't help that. I mean, it's a nice show, and you're a, you're an adequate host, but you got some lousy furniture. <laughs> Well, if that's, the, if that's the spirit in which you're approaching this, give me some blunt assessments of other people. Shoot. Andre the Giant. Most phenomenal athlete in sports today. Seven foot five, 525 pounds. Nobody like him. He has a fear of snakes, though. Jake no. the Snake Roberts. You no. know, that Jake the Snake represents his Waterloo. No, Jake the Snake Roberts has a snake, Damien. Now, we don't know if that snake is poisonous. We don't like to be surprised. That's the whole thing. Yeah. He's not afraid of snakes. He has many different kinds of snake belts at home. He's not afraid of snakes. But he doesn't like to be surprised. And what Jake the Snake Roberts did is he came in that ring, opened up that bag, and took out a snake. I heard it rattle. I know I did. So, to me, that's a rattler. Jesse the body. Very intelligent man. Talk to him a lot. You have a high regard for him. Very much. Great actor, too. But... Isn't everything in wrestling strictly on the up and up? I beg your pardon? Isn't everything in wrestling strictly on the up and up? How could you characterize him as an actor? Well, he was in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Oh, that's right. <sighs> Looks like I am going to be the host of this. <laughs> I don't mean, am See, I, I thought, speeding up? I'm I thought, going too fast. I thought me. I almost had you pinned down there. No, no, I, my shoulder's never been pinned. I, I thought, you've never been pinned? More coffee for the host. Then, then how is it that you've been defeated in the ring? Well, how, would I, how have I been defeated? Oh, you've lost matches. No, no. See, the Red Roosters claims he defeated me at WrestleMania. He got a one, two, three count on me. But right before that, the Warrior got his hands on me, injured my side. Under doctor's advice, he told me not to go to the ring. But as a competitor I am, I went in that ring. And he just beat up a person that was wounded. If he wants to claim that as a victory, go ahead. The Honky Tonk Man. Going against Hulk Hogan. With Jimmy uh, Hart, man, the Honky Tonk Man against Hulk Hogan. I hear that the honky-tonk man just might play a tune on Hulk Hogan. That's but, part of every one of those big Gibsons. But you've always underrated the Hulkster. And he's always risen to every occasion. I've never underestimated the Hulk, uh, Hulkster, uh, Hulk Hogan, or whatever you want to call him. Uh, he's a very big, powerful man. He has a lot of humanoids out there that back him. And when they start yelling and chanting and cheering, he enjoys that. He loves it. It gets his adrenaline going. He's just a human being. He has flesh. He has blood. He has fingers and tendons. He can be hurt. Tag team match. The oh, Brain Busters. My Brain Busters. Tully Blanchard and Aaron Anderson will be World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions very shortly. They've got to take on Demolition, though, right? That's right. We wrestled them before on uh, Saturday Night Main Event, and we won that match. Of course, they were disqualified, which to me is kind of a cheap way out. But we took them on points if you wanted to have a point system. We led the match the whole way, and they were lucky they escaped because they got disqualified. And coming up, It'll be two out of three falls. Now, now let's see what they can do. Two out of three falls, that's fine. That sounds like the spirit of true sports competition. But when a, when a couple of competitors are dubbed the brain busters, that has a certain sinister edge to it, don't you think? That's what you think, and that's what the humanoids think. But see, you can beat a person's brains in different ways. You can make them worry about my team, and they'll have a convulsion, and go upside down and pass out. Or we can crack their heads open. See, there's a lot of different ways I can do things. But you, you're not necessarily against cracking their head open. No, no, I'm not. I kind of enjoy that, too. Yeah. After yeah. they're mentally beaten first. That's what's great is when a person is mentally beaten. You can fire a guy in a job like that and send him home. Well, he goes home to his wife who's got a beautiful outfit on. she got it at Fredericks of North Dakota. And he's got a lukewarm TV dinner in front of him and a can of warm suds. He's watching a black and white set, probably watching later with Bob Costas, scratching his head and wondering what's going to happen to him. Well, he's out of work. But if you let him know a week before, two weeks before, that he might get canned, you can watch him shake for two weeks. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> That's what I like. That sweat comes up right back here. You, oh, yeah. you are a demonic man. Thank you. 
coming up Saturday night on NBC. It's the main event with Bobby the Brain Heenan managing the Brain Busters against Demolition, Hulk Hogan against the Honky Tonk Man, and Brutus the Barber Beefcase. Beefcase, and he is quite a case. Brutus the Barber Beefcake against Macho Man Randy Savage, managed now by the Sensational Sherry. What a lineup. Well, I predict that uh, Beefcake will get his head shaved. I know what Savage has got in mind and the way Sherry operates. I'm going to be managing new World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions. And Hulk Hogan will probably be watching Jimmy Hart more than he's watching the Honky Tonk Man. And he'll probably get his hair parted with that big old Gibson guitar. The anticipation builds. See you later. Arsenio, thank you. Join us tomorrow night for some chatter with Chevy Chase.